every journey has a beginning. There is always that moment when one leaves behind the known and the familiar and starts into the new and the unknown. Even if we know the end point, the destination, we aren't always sure what we will encounter along the way, what new experiences and new insights will present themselves. As Christians setting off on the journey to the cross, we can be sure that Jesus has gone and goes before us, leading the way. And Jesus travels with us, supporting and encouraging us on every step. So, every year on the Wednesday six and a half weeks before Easter, the Church, the Body of Christ, once again sets off on its Lenten journey. While we know that the cross and ultimately resurrection are our destination, we do not know what experiences and insights will meet us on our journey. Joy at the start, fear in the journey, joy in the coming home. Part of the heart gets lost in the learning, somewhere along the road. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, darkness obscures the trail. Curse in the quest, courting disaster, measureless nights flow. Moments of rest. Glimpses of laughter, a treasure along the road. Along the road, your steps may stumble, your thoughts may turn to stray. But through it all, the heart held humble, levels and lights.
Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward for your God in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in houses of worship and on the streets to be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then God, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in houses of worship and on street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your God who is unseen. Then your God, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Lent is a time to look deep into our souls. It is not a time to do things as we have always done, but to see the ways in which God is working in our world and in our lives. It is not a time to trumpet our piety before others, but to connect more deeply with God in our hearts. If we are willing to confess our transgressions and our sins, we must also recognize that it is only with God's help that we will be washed clean. This will be crucial as we proceed on our Lenten journey. It is a journey in, with, and to God. It is not a time to depend solely on our ability and ourselves. We cannot put a new and right spirit in ourselves. It is through God's actions, not ours, that we are given new hearts and new lives. An essential dimension of our journey, therefore, is to recognize and admit our mortality. All of those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners, or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us not be marked, not for sorrow, let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear.
as the dust and ash is imposed on me, forcing me to see my myriad of limits, I remember. I remember I am surrounded by the household of God, sinners redeemed by grace, limited like me, but ever seeking to imitate Christ, however poorly. I remember that I am incapable of doing the good I know, but am forgiven anyway. I remember that even as I have shaken the dust from my feet in haste and without just cause, the Holy Spirit has sometimes blown the dirt on my head that I had thrown at others. I remember that repentance means turning away from myself and toward Jesus. I remember that nothing angers God more than rituals of penitence, unaccompanied by actions of love. I remember that this Lenten journey is not only about giving up something, but also about standing up for someone. I remember that my years on earth will come to an end and that God willing, my works will follow me and thanks to the journey Jesus is embarking on, I don't need those. Friends, this has certainly been a different Ash Wednesday than many of us are used to. For many of us, we will be gathered here this evening in the sanctuary of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ as an opportunity to begin this season of Lent together. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of a season, a season change for those of us who follow a liturgical calendar. And many of us did gather at some way this day, either this morning or at lunchtime or earlier this evening, as we had ashes put on our foreheads with these familiar words, from dust we came and to dust we shall return. From dust we came, and to dust we shall return. Let us pray. God, on this Ash Wednesday, as we begin this season we call Lent, in preparation for Easter and the joys of resurrection, we ask, God, that you would give us a time of contemplation and pause, a time to reflect on our own lives, and a time to enter into this season in preparation, yes, for joy and for resurrection and for the celebration of a risen Christ, but also with a deep sense of awareness of our mortality, of where we came from and to what we shall return, the great source of it all, God. So now, God, as we prepare this moment, I ask that you would touch my lips of clay. Mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lent is a season of penitence and confession. It's a time for us to remember from where we came and to that great source to which we shall return. It is, in some ways, a moment in our own lives when we can pause, not just to reflect on our past, but also to think about what our future might look like. Now, I realize that we also need to live in the day, and that sometimes planning for a future may be a little difficult. But the invitation of this season is to be in those moments of reflection, to look back over the last year or more, and to think about the ways in which we could have done better. Now, I also understand that for many, Ash Wednesday, this sense of dust that sits on our forehead this night, that for some of us, Lent can also be a time of deep and inner reflection. And that somehow, sometimes in the church, we have made it that moment when we beat ourselves on the chest. Repent, repent, repent. And leads us sometimes into a dark space. But as we begin this season of Lent this day, I invite us not only to see Lent as a time of penitence and confession, but also to see what the future holds for us. 
For if it were not for this season of Lent and that first Easter when Jesus rose from the dead, if it were not for the events of the Christ that we worship, it may just be a time of penitence and confession. But because of the Christ that we know and this risen experience of a Christ that lives in us, it is also a time of freedom and liberation. They can go hand in hand. We can be penitent. We can receive and know our confession of past failures. But if it just stays with penitence and confession, we miss the entirety of the story of freedom and liberation. For it was Christ's death on the cross. It was Christ's passion for all humankind. It was Christ's final act before resurrection and the ascension and the liberation of the Holy Spirit that, that fell upon those first disciples as they gathered in that upper room at Pentecost. It became a moment of freedom and liberation, and we must keep in sight the end goal, the, the final prize, that freedom and liberation that also mixes itself with penitence and confession. Our scripture readings spoke of that so much about living our lives, not just with a state of piety in the world so that others look at how good we are, but remembering that our mortality from dust we came and to dust we shall return, that that sense of who we are in the eyes of this God who creates us and loves us always invites us into freedom and liberation invites us to be set free, to be set free from our past, to be set free by penance and confession and repentance, to be set free from who we were to who we are and who we are becoming. And in the journey of life, the along-the-road journey that Jeremy and Sean played for us and sang for us, along that road, decisions get made and lives are changed. For me, Ash Wednesday is a great opportunity to enter into this season of Lent in some ways to prepare again for my statement of faith and the living out of my faith. That Lent is a great opportunity, not just to reflect, not just to confess, not just to repent, but a great opportunity to remember the dust that in some ways could not be put on our foreheads literally, but is certainly by the whiff of the Holy Spirit, that sense of the dove of peace entering into this moment also gives us dust to live into. A dust that's being formed, a life that's being formed, a life that's being changed, a life that is being transformed. In these next six, seven weeks or more, as we prepare for, for Easter and Resurrection, for Holy Week, and for all of the experiences that we will engage in both on Sundays and on Wednesdays, as we build our altars at home, as we create something new for ourselves, so we too are being made new by the sense of Ash Wednesday, by the sense of entering into this season by entering into life that becomes new life, that becomes transformed life, that becomes transformative. It certainly was that for Jesus, a life that was changed, a life that was transformed, a life perhaps that he never knew would be that ending place. But the end was never the end. Just as we believe as, as followers of Jesus that death is not the end for us, but a gateway to something new, to something more. So Ash Wednesday, reminding us of our mortality, reminding us that our time will ultimately on this earth come to an end. It also is an invitation to make not just the best of what is left to us, but to prepare ourselves for what comes next for what comes after. For Jesus, it was resurrection. For Jesus, it was a, a sense of reconnecting and empowering us to be like Jesus in the world today. And we get to do that in life, through our freedom and through our liberation. 
and penance and confession and repentance and knowing our place in the world, knowing whom we are and to whom we belong, offers us that freedom and liberation. Every Sunday we have celebrated communion in our homes. And today we are able to celebrate Ash Wednesday. Now, you may not have the ash from last year's uh, palm crosses, but you do have something in your home, I'm sure, that I also have in mine, and that is dust. And the invitation, no, don't go and grab the dust off the shelf or take your Bible down and blow the, the dust off of it, but symbolically today, acknowledge the dust that lives around us, the ash that exists around us, and enter into this season penance and confession, freedom and liberation. And if you need to grab some of that dust and make the sign of your cross on your forehead as an intention of entering into the season, go do it. But know that we live. We live in this season. We live in the anticipation of the freedom and liberation that comes with it. And so, on this Ash Wednesday, celebrated and surrounded by those whom we love, surrounded and free and, and entering into the spirit of this moment, I encourage you to know that you are being supported and encouraged along the road in your journey of life. And prepare for Easter, for Easter is a time of resurrection, not just for Jesus, but for you, to emerge out of this season, ready for that freedom and liberation that accompanies itself with penance and confession. Over these next six, seven weeks together, we will explore the journey of Jesus and along the road, see where our journey has met Jesus himself. And in that journey, we will find what we seek. If we enter into the spirit of Lent, in deep preparation for our own baptism, a baptism of the Holy Spirit that will open us to life in its abundance. Ash Wednesday, moving into a new season, but a season that offers us so much. As we finish this sermon, I invite you to be involved in a small group and in those small groups to live life together so that you and I can enter into penance and confession and freedom and liberation and find along the road the gifts of resurrection and Easter. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, and Happy Lent. I heard.
So friends, we end this Ash Wednesday service with a reminder that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. And in some ways, perhaps the most important aspect of life is what we do between those two points of our lives. The lives we change, the lives that we offer hope for, and the lives that get transformed. And you get to do that every single day here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ in the ways in which we manifest life here at this building. For even though we have not been gathering literally, we have been gathering virtually, we've been feeding the hungry, we've been taking care of our children in Hope Day School, we've been responding to the numerous pastoral care needs and doing them in new and innovative ways. We have had to pivot and ensure that together, when we can regather safely, we do so with great joy and with great pride so that we might do even greater things in freedom and liberation. So as we end this service, I again invite you to make your gift to Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. If you're able to become a sustaining giver of this congregation, so that through your regular giving, we might do even greater things than we already do. And prepare your hearts and your minds in this season of Lent to find your freedom and liberation in the midst of penance and confession. So now, unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given, and the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us, and remain with us, both now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.